I used to lie to my own mother about the bruises that would cover my arm when I'd come back from school. Green, brown, some of them black, like big knuckle marks on my arms. I remember one time like she actually genuinely got scared for me. She was shouting, who did this? What was it? What happened? Every time I'm lying, like, like a woman who's going through domestic abuse. Yeah, I just I just fell down the stairs. No, 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 yeah, they didn't mean to. It was just in sports, you know? It was just, yeah, we're, we were all doing it. For some reason, I felt incapable of telling my mother that my own friends were beating me in class and the teachers weren't doing anything. This became a normal experience for me that when I'd go to, to science class, to physics, two of my friends would genuinely like punch me with the thick of their knuckles into my arms and there's there's a part of your arm right about there like the tricep part like where the bicep meets the tricep where if you punch there there's no there's not a lot of f like flesh there i was a skinny kid as well instantly bruises and it gets this disgusting like green purple color outside the same class i remember there was one disabled kid who always thought like I was always getting in trouble for bullying this one kid even though I actually did nothing to him I was getting into trouble because other people would pick on this kid and then they'd just like sometimes they'd blame me for it and this one time one of my friends put a box of condoms in this disabled kid's uh, like blazer pocket and then shouted out loud oh, oh he's got like condoms in his pocket and then you know he did this kid Poor, poor, um, I won't say his name, but yeah, he just, you know, got really, like, flustered in front of everyone who's laughing at him and stuff. And I got there late, right? I, I was told this story. I wasn't even there. When I sit down, I literally started to say to people, I guarantee, like, I bet I'm going to get in trouble for this. I remember one of the girls sat next to me was like, no, you're not. You weren't even there. A random teacher walks into the room, apologizes to our teacher and says, well, I need to, like, speak to someone. It's very important. I was like, come with me right now. I'm like, what the? I'm just genuinely, like, I'm getting blamed for something I genuinely did not even do. I'm sat there with this teacher who's, who's being aggressive towards me, shouting, no, you did this, you did this, you did this, you did this. It's like I, I didn't even have the confidence to kind of, like, argue against it. And so I just kind of sat there and took the brute of their force, like, whimpering a little bit. Till eventually I just started, like, crying. And she handed me a piece of paper to write me, like, tell me to, like, write down a statement or something. And all I could do, literally all I wrote was just check the CCTV. So she, she sees it, kind of smirks and whatever. Like, I, I actually, and I ended up, I'm not going to lie, I ended up just snitching. So I literally, I snitched on everyone. Because like, at that point, it's like, I've got nothing else to lose, right? I'm getting into trouble. This, this woman, this full-on, like, adult is screaming in my face. You're going to get excluded. You're this. You've been picking on him for this and this and this and this. I'm like a little fucking traumatized kid. I get traumatized in the home. You're triggering my PTSD right now. Like, I'm like, when, a, when an adult shouts at me when I was like a teenager, I'm expecting a slap. I'm brown skin, so you should know that. And you should know that if you get into my face, I'm genuinely getting like PTSD symptoms right now. Back up. <laughs> but I end up like literally snitching on everyone that, I, that, you know, like the people who've told me the story. I know who, who has done what and everything. And um, I'm not proud of that, but it's like, what are you going to do? Are you... In this situation, would you have taken the blame? Would you have been this, like, cool high school student who takes the blame for everyone else? Or would you have just thought, man, screw them. They're letting me take the blame right now. Screw them. I'm not, like, I wasn't even involved. I'm going to, like, if the teacher's forcing me to mention something, I'm just going to mention what I've heard is this. And I'm kind of thinking, you know, just saying it without realizing what she's going to do next. She walks me back to the class and literally as she, like, tells me to sit down, she calls out everyone whose names that I mentioned to her. So now, not only did I snitch, but the entire class knows that I snitched. What do you think happens after that? You can probably relate to the feeling of being a victim and yet still getting into trouble. And bullying is, is so prevalent in schools that I th about 40, 50% of people get bullied. Which literally just means that one in one out of two people get bullied when they were in school. So one out of two is like you or your best friend. Me or you. Well, it was me, so you're fine. But <laughs> and it doesn't just have to be in the physical world. Because a lot of bullying these days, I think I was like the first generation where the bullying actually moved online. 
And that can even be more brutal, even though there's no physical aspect to it, even though there's no physical bruises, there's mental, there's mental and spiritual pain when it happens online. So online, what used to happen is me and my friends used to play this video game called League of Legends. And we used to use Skype, like this is before Discord was even a thing. So we used to use Skype and for all the guys my age who use Skype, they know how this works. It's like you join these calls together, but one person would be kind of like the, the leader, the moderator of like the call and he could remove anyone he wanted and you couldn't get put back in unless he added you back in. And so it was just this couple that with the kind of people who play League of Legends, that's too much power for those cretins. And so there was always this one, this one friend who just would always remove me from the calls if like, you know, we were like chatting like um, shit against each other, you know, like how you just like, in a video game, if you kill someone, you, you trash talk a little bit, whatever. He just remove you and then you just, I'd be sat there in silence just for five minutes, you know, messaging everyone. Oh, can you, can you tell him to add me back in blue? Add me back in bro. But I, like the game's almost finished. I'm just sat here in silence. You know, it's just when you expect to play a video game with your friends and then you get kicked out of that, but you're still in the video game, but you're no longer speaking to them. It just feels a bit boring and, and detached. And that was the times where I'd get invited into the Skype call. Never mind like the, the brutal times where you see your friends in the, the video game lobby where they could invite you and you message them and they probably do see it and they don't even reply for like a minute, 60 seconds, 120 seconds. And then you see them actually go into the game without you and you're sat there just by yourself. Once we got a little bit older, a lot of not just my friends, but just people in my year just started being outright racist to me. Packy. Multiple times a day. To the point that other people who weren't involved in this, usually girls, they'd hear this and I would see the shocked and disgust look on their face when they'd hear like another, like their peers say like something so offensive and so racist. And they'd look at me with like so, such heartfelt compassion and they'd say like, well, what's happening, is that okay? Guess what I would say? to a bystander who was trying to help me when I was getting bullied and like, you know, getting called racist names. Oh no, 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 it's okay. It's, it, it's just, it's funny. And I, I, I say it to myself as well. Do you think anyone helped me then? And it was true. I literally started saying it to myself. It was almost like a joke that I would call myself a packy. The self-deprecating humor that you do, you put yourself down just to get like a smirk out of these people who you don't even like who don't even like you. Because if you look at their actions, they actually hate you. And here you are like a little monkey. They're like little throwing little nuts at you like dance monkey and you're like, oh, yeah, like oh, we're having so much fun, aren't we guys? Like, <clears throat> What you're gonna learn in this video is, it's gonna change it all for you. This is a full guide to stop bullying that's currently happening. And also for the slightly older people who maybe aren't getting bullied right now, but maybe feel and have the humility to admit that you might still have some kind of pain, history, damage inside of you that you need to heal from. So this is for two kinds of people. This is for most likely the teenager who's getting bullied right now and also the adults who did get bullied, who did have these adverse experiences, who maybe just wants to admit you might not have moved on fully because it turns out, unfortunately, bullying is not something that you can just move on from. What we're gonna look today is research back. I literally hired a psychologist to help me with this script. His name is Yusuf, he's a very intelligent man. What we're gonna see is bullying has lifelong consequences. But just before we begin, there was a comment that someone had left me on one of my videos. I made a video about, <clears throat> about homeschooling. And I said, in ho if you homeschool your children, they can avoid a lot of the adverse experiences that happen in school. So, you know, the bullying and, and being around moronic, degenerate children and everything. And this one guy commented saying like, no, but, <clears throat> The, the bullying would help build character and he was being serious. He said, with the bullying, you'd then build the kind of character, the discipline, and then, you know, you'd, you'd get criticized and that's good for a person. What we're going to see in the research is that bullying does not build character. It destroys it lifelong unless you specifically heal from it. It's common sense when I say it out loud that bullying is bad for you. There is no, rev like, there is, isn't a benefit to getting bullied. But sometimes you can cope hard enough and think that, oh, well, you know, it, it made me into a strong person. No, it didn't. 
No, it didn't. You know, you know that phrase like, oh, if it doesn't kill you, it makes you stronger. No, it doesn't. Say that to a cancer patient. Like, no, you're weaker forever because of this now. The same with bullying. You, you, unless you do something right here, right now to heal from the bullying that's happened, you are weaker for the rest of your life. You are literally less intelligent, less physically fit, less mentally fit. You will make less money. You can start to like vis visualize it and, and guess the kind of research I'm going to bring in, which literally shows the people who've been bullied through, through high school they end up having worse lives. So if you're sat here coping right now, thinking, oh, but if it doesn't kill me, it makes me stronger. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. But having said that, there's actually quite a lot of hope because there is research-backed, practical, effective things that you can do right here, right now, that I want you to get immediately after watching this video for stopping bullying and also from healing from it. You must understand one thing about me, I value results. There's a lot of self-improvement content out there where the guy just speaks and speaks and speaks. You watch the video with a lot of dopamine and then nothing in your real life changes. I've always hated that. With my videos, you get practical advice that I want you to take within 24 hours of watching the video. That means that there is uncomfortable, practical, actionable steps for you to take whilst you watch this video. Some whilst you watch this video and some immediately after that you have to take back into the real world when you go to school and that bully's picking on you again. I'm going to literally tell you step by step exactly what to do, what to say in that ex the next experience where a bully does some bullshit to you or he slaps the back of your head or he takes your box I'm genuinely gonna tell you exactly which words will be most effective I've thought about this like I've, I've, I'm an overthinker so I've put my brain power into this for about three days and also the brain power of another like I'll end up talking about Yusuf he's the researcher who I've hired for this and he's like really good at finding studies and research and explaining them to me so I'm hoping that this is going to be a very, very valuable video for you. I have a bunch of notes for us to go through as well. So before we begin, I want to personally tell you that all of this is part of my mission and purpose to bring you free education with no cost to yourself. I do all of this with all of the videos on my channel because I want you to just get results in life. Because when I was going through my own like dark days before I really got onto self-improvements, I struggled. It took me over nine months to make any, like to see any real results when I was consuming this content. Cause a lot of it was, a lot of YouTubers make videos for views and for YouTube AdSense and watch time and click through rate. They're the things that a lot of YouTubers think about. Those things are still nice and I don't criticize them, but I'm trying my absolute best to try not to be like selfish when I make these videos for, you know, my own personal gain of YouTube revenue and stuff. And rather my, my, the focus I keep gravitating back to is just how do I get you the most results possible? I do all of this for you with no cost to yourself. I could take sponsorships and brand deals where I spend a few minutes telling you about products and stuff. Those things are nice, but I'd rather do something different. I'd rather just quickly offer you the one and only product that I made myself, it's called Adonis School. Adonis School is a private online community that you can join to make friends who are just like you, who are on self-improvements, who are meditating, exercising, delaying gratification, who aren't degenerates. It's the hub spot for all of the people on self-improvement. We're all in here literally doing these good habits, reading these books, having these discussions, talking about this stuff online. I'm active in there. And it's a... I think it's an exceptional place for you to just make friends who are similar to you because a lot of my audience have told me, it's a very common experience, that when you really do start to implement the advice that I give out, naturally you have less things in common with the people that you've known already. And so it's a very common experience for young people who follow my videos who end up just getting lonely because there's no one that you can relate to. Your family don't understand you anymore and your friends are kind of Jeffries and you can, you know, you're kind of still attached to those old people who are part of the previous chapter of your life because you just don't want to be lonely right now. And so Adonis School is made for you. It has outstanding customer reviews that are all verified. And you can have a look at that on the website, which I'll link below. There's a lot of quite like high value, successful guys in there that I personally added. We're not going to expect them to be too active because they're obviously busy, but I, I literally just sent the link to all of like my high value, successful friends. We've got Sneeko in there, Luke Belmar's in there, and he posts every now and then as well. He posts quite frequently some like good, he calls it data sets. Uh, Chris Williamson, Derek from More Plates, More Dates, First Man, and... 
a bunch of like of friends I met in Dubai who make a lot of money and stuff. You know, I, I just sent the link to them so they could join. And then we've got a lot, like everyone's in here. Just, they're all just like you in here. If you're interested to that, you can go to hamza-ahmed.com slash school. It's the top link in, in the description. Just go there right now. I chose this video and this topic because there was a young man inside of Adonis school who was 15 years old and his post was, it was just very simple. He just wrote, how do I stop these two guys from picking on me? They keep annoying, they keep doing annoying shit to me and it's an, like no one's helping. That's all he wrote. And I'm not going to lie. Imagine that, like imagine seeing a, like a post, a comment or something that someone's essentially sent you of a 15 year old saying something like, how do I stop these two guys? And they keep doing annoying shit. <sighs> it brings up some memories, doesn't it? If you've experienced the, some kind of bullying, maybe like I have, like it brings up these painful memories of like knowing how powerless this, this young man probably feels, knowing that his teachers are probably not really doing much, knowing that he probably isn't even telling anyone about it, knowing that his parents barely even know what's happening, knowing that he probably doesn't even have many friends, and the friends he does have are probably not even that nice, they probably don't even support him in this massive, traumatizing experience he's going through. It turns out that there's actually a lot of effective research studies, experiments, questionnaires, surveys, things that we can learn off that researchers and psychologists have put together, but they've just never really been able to spread this, you know, that, that information well. And so I'm hoping that I can be the person who puts these very intelligent people and get, essentially gives their work a platform that we can learn from because there's some really good research that we can learn from and I'll give you my own understanding as we go through it. For this video and for onwards, I've hired a research assistant named Yusuf. I'll eventually I'll go through his like credentials and qualifications. Maybe I'll do like a little video with him if you want to get to know him more because he's helping me a lot with making these videos. He went and scoured a bunch of papers and, and wrote down like, you know, he distilled like this whole document for me to go through the research. And um, I'm hoping this is going to be a very, very effective video for you. We found what's statistically effective. And coupling that with my own story and my way of speaking, I think that this video can be a very positive influence. Not only this video, but all the videos we produce from now on. It's just a net positive influence on the world by teaching education and by giving education on health is, is my goal here. I wanna just encourage you right now that if you are going through bullying as we speak, or if it has happened in the past, it turns out that there's actually quite a lot of hope and effective strategies that you can use to st stop bullying a lot faster than you realize. I'm talking within 72 hours and also to heal for free, no therapy or costs associated with this, <clears throat> to heal for free the bullying that happened, which you have the humility to realize that it probably might affect you in some kind of subconscious way, because you can imagine the data that we'll go into that, you know, the kids who were bullied as, as children, they grow up and that group probably ends up being less productive, maybe ends up pursuing drugs and, and risk-taking behavior more than their peers who were never bullied. And that's, that's exactly what the research does actually show. The first actionable step that I have for you is just a very, very quick one. It's a vow that you will actually try to use what you're going to learn here practically because education and consuming educational content is fantastic. I really do think learning is fantastic, but there's practical strategies in this video that will help you, but it's going to be uncomfortable because the easier thing to do is just, just act as you ha have, which hasn't been effective. To ignore the bullies and to, you know, pretend like, yeah, I'm just gonna, you know, just ignore them, keep ignoring them, like that's even working for you. So it's just a vow, a very quick thing for you right now. Maybe write it down, maybe say it out loud and just vow to yourself, I will at least use one of the strategies that I'm gonna learn in this video as long as it seems to me like rational to do so. Even if it feels hard, if it feels rational and reasonable for me, I will at least use one of the strategies within 24 hours, within 48 hours from watching this video. 
really put that into your focus thinking, okay, this is a practical like assignment that I'm going to do. And it's probably going to be kind of uncomfortable. If you're getting bullied right now, visualize that little shit who's bullying you and visualize whatever like the effective strategy in your mind seems to be that you were going to uncover very soon. And actually doing it, even though your heart's beating fast before the moment. We want real results here, not just mental masturbation. Why does bullying happen? We've got fantastic research, which tells us exactly why individuals bully. But first, I, need, I think we need to get a little bit angry. Because I think the school system is a hot spot for this type of behavior. It's not even totally the teachers to blame because when you think about the teachers that you've had in high school and primary school, they're overworked. They're not appreciated enough. They've got 30 children to try and teach at once and a lot of children are moronic, really. A lot of t children have like, like undiagnosed ADHD and they're all just messing about and then, you know what I mean? Imagine being a teacher yourself and trying to control 30 kids in some public school. It probably would be hard, especially when these children's parents are morons. These children's parents are smokers and drinkers. These children have iPads and iPhones since they was five years old. That, that boy over there has had a, a porn addiction since he was seven years old. That girl over there in your class who's, who's 11 years old has already started having sex. It's like, it's kind of hard to teach these children. So I don't blame the teachers as much, although teachers on the pinnacle of society that, that you were led to believe, a lot of teachers are alcoholics themselves. A lot of teachers are obese. How are you like leading the, the, the new generation when you, your health is in, is in shambles? But I think it's the school system that is the problem. I think bullying has been a problem for over 50 years maybe, and, and it's still not been resolved because this, these big school-wide systems that they do, you know, these little protocols, like they have like anti-bullying day. The schools love to do that kind of stuff, don't they? Anti-bullying day. They do that whilst they, like, you've been getting bullied, like harassed, abused for months and years, and the, the whole school will throw an anti-bullying day, like, yay! What's it gonna do? Because what you actually needed was true support. What you actually needed was a teacher who literally just like saw what was happening and teachers have seen this and just tell the bully, no more, you're out of the class, that's it, it's done. The issue which I have seen online, I've done a little bit of research, is that a lot of schools around the world follow what's called a no child left behind policy, which means that they don't actually have the permission to fully kick out a child. And if a child is so like bad, so you know misbehaving like crazy, if they do eventually get excluded, where are they gonna go? Because a child legally needs to get an education till a certain age in most countries. And so that child, this problematic child, will just go to the next school and the next one and the next one. You probably had a bunch of these like problematic childs that would go from the next school to the next one. And maybe one of them was the ones who bullied you. Or maybe you got bullied by the guy who was just below that level. So he never got excluded, but he was just like, he was bad enough, but not bad enough to get excluded. The schools are very soft on this idea of like leaving a child behind, but some children, some like the, the, the weakest person in the tribe, not even the weakest, sorry, but the one who actually actively hurts the tribe shouldn't just be left behind. He should be beheaded. I know this sounds like crazy, but if you genuinely like think about caveman times, imagine we're all in the tribe. If there's an old man who used to be the tribe leader, but he's got kind of old now, but we all respect him and he's kind of crippled we will literally walk with him. And in certain tribes, they would have just killed him and give him like a nice humble death. That's different, right? But let's say, for example, we're all in this tribe and there's a man there who is actively hurting everyone else in the tribe. It wouldn't have just been that, you know, one day we'll wake up and just leave without him and, you know, just walk off without him because he's active and fit enough to chase up with us. We would have pinned him down and crushed this, his skull. Literally, we would have done that. These days, obviously, that's dramatic. You can't like just destroy someone like that, right? But metaphorically speaking, that's, that is, if there's someone who is weakening your tribe, if there's someone who is hurting your people, they should be annihilated. They should be. Now, I'm not saying that we need to murder or, or even physically hurt a bully because we're going to realize that bullies are victims in themselves. But when you think about how different times are of how we would have treated a bully a hundred thousand years ago to now, 
They've got a lot of power to just abuse a lot of other people who had a lot of potential to help our tribe. Because the bully's not helping the tribe. The bully's not serving other people. But the person who gets bullied might have. He might have been intelligent enough to serve the tribe in, in some ways. Why do some people bully? This is a question I wanted to answer. And we have a paper which is titled, Why do children and ad adolescents bully their peers? First of all, this paper gave us a definition for bullying, which I think is interesting. Bullying is defined as a form of peer aggression based on three defining features. Intention to harm, repetitiveness, imbalance of power, power in favor of the perpetrator. Harming someone, repetitiveness, and an imbalance of power. The bully is more powerful than the victim, which seems like common sense, but this will come up soon. And it's very important to memorize this one. So why do some people bully? There's two theories that we can go through. One is called family system theory. And I'm going to read you out this, this study now. One study done by the Massachusetts Department of Public Health and the CDC surveyed nearly 6,000 middle and high schoolers and found that bullies were statistically more likely to have either been physically hurt by a family member or witnessed violence within the family than those who did not bully their peers. Bullies got bullied at home. It's what we probably expected at this point. You see, when a parent is aggressive to a child, in general, the child is not going to have a safe space for them to unleash their anger. You see, children don't learn anything. They really don't. Learning is a myth. You don't learn, you simply just imitate. Maybe you get to a point of like adulthood when you can start to learn. But as a child, you don't actually learn anything. You just imitate. So when a child demonstrates this behavior, or when an adult demonstrates this behavior to his child, this behavior of aggressiveness, of snappy, of arguments, of, of shouting and threats, the child will imitate. Now the child can't imitate back to the parent because usually that would make the parent more angry. Imagine like a parent shouting at the child, and beating the child, aggressive towards the child and the child doing that back. In some cultures, in some families, that's, that's normal and it's accepted and the, the parent kind of just... In a lot of like abusive households and in just in general in a lot of households, the child is not safe to be aggressive and angry back to the parents. So they've got this built up of anger, this resentment that needs to be unleashed. Can't do it at home, so where are they going to do it? With an abusive, unsupportive, aggressive, angry family, most likely you're going to make an abusive, unsupportive, aggressive bully, a child. That child then is going to displace that anger in an environment where they're not deeply punished for it. In an environment that one feels like there's no consequences for that anger. And for two, something that's constant and never ending, like, you know, in an environment where they can continuously, repetitively keep bullying and hurting someone else. And so now you realize the school is a hotspot for bullying because it gives the bully an environment where there's largely no consequences for them for bullying another person. And also it gives them the repetitive nature. It lets them get reps in because it's every day, Monday to Friday, the same classes, there's like, 50 opportunities per week for this bully to unleash like a little bit of anger on another kid. There's another theory. Why do some people bully? And it's genetics. I found this one very interesting. Researchers at Duke University and King's College London, they took 1,116 pairs of twins and had both their mothers and teachers report instances of victimization or of them being bullies themselves. So what I learned, I studied psychology as well, but I wasn't very good at it. I, I was brain dead till I was like 22 years old, really. Just taking drugs and partying and just wasting time and whatever. So even though I did study psychology, I did learn a few things. And one thing I always learned was that doing studies on twins is 
deeply powerful because you can see if there's a genetic component to something. You can see if you take identical twins, they have the same genes, right? They look the same, they've got the same genes because that's because like the egg splits into two. So the egg has the same DNA at both times. So essentially identical twins have the exact same genes. So if you see some kind of similarity between them compared to similarities that you may see in siblings who are not identical, but were raised relatively the same, you can then see if there's a genetic component for something because that's the only difference, right? Does, does that make sense? If there's a family that has identical twins and then there's a family that has siblings, like just brother and sister or two brothers, but they're not totally identical, you can start to see the differences between the people who have got the same genes and the ones who have got slightly different genes because they're siblings but not genetic twins. They found it to be statistically significant that both identical twins were more likely to be bullies than or actually victims as well, than for the fraternal twins that weren't the same gene. So there's like identical twins, fraternal twins. Fraternal twins can be like the ones where two eggs go down into the woman to get ready to be impregnated, which means that it's very similar genes, but it's not identical. Fraternal twins, you may have seen, is like when you've heard of, you, you hear that these two, this brother and sister are twins, but obviously they're not identical. They were born at the same time, but they're not identical because the boy and girl. So the difference you would assume, because they both are going to get raised in a, in a somewhat similar way, especially when these types of studies control other, um, other variables, for example, you're just going to see the genetic impact. And it turns out that the identical twins were statistically more likely to be both victims and bullies themselves which means that there is a little bit of some kind of genetic play. I wonder which which part of like the gene it could be. Maybe it's like higher levels of testosterone or, or like some kind of maybe damage to the prefrontal cortex or something. They found this even more true for the case of boys. So for boys, there's a higher, stronger genetic component of being a bully. Why the bully picks you and not others? If you've wondered why you're the victim, if you imagine yourself in this classroom, there's other kids there. Why is it you that is the victim? Why is it that, you know, you can imagine someone else you know is, is a victim. Why is it that kid in specific? What do you think right here, right now, if you just had to answer this question to yourself, maybe you want to just go comment and like answer this question. Why is it specific children who are victims consistently for all of their time in school compared to some children who have never been bullied? What is it about these kids that makes them prone to getting bullied? What's the obvious answers? The brutal answers. Well, there's a paper titled Swedish 10 year old children's perceptions and experiences of bullying. 43% of the 10 year olds in the study, there was 960 children, 43% of them said it was about your physical appearance. That was the main reason of getting bullied. 43%, so almost half of the children in the study said that the main reason why someone was getting bullied was because of their physical appearance. And then even another 31, or in general, 31% said that kids were being bullied for being in some way different. So how you look, and most likely looking unattractive or looking different, different skin color, maybe overweight, underweight, and then also just simply being different, different language, different ethnicity, different culture. Being different is why you'll probably get picked on, but there's more reasons. This is just one of the first ones. There's something I learned a long time ago, which is called the in-group and the out-group. I actually use this psychological understanding to get 2 million subscribers on YouTube. No matter what you're trying to do, this could really help you. There's an us versus them dynamic in the human brain or the nervous system, which is very powerful. We will naturally start to associate with people that we feel are like us. And we naturally, which is quite brutal to say, we naturally start to dislike, distrust, and even harm people that we feel are in our out group. My in group, for example, can be the, the followers of this channel. Your in group could be like, you know, the guys who are on self-improvement, the guys who go to the gym, it's this close group that you've got. And those people over there, the ones that, you know, they say this about us. Have you noticed that I do this really well in my videos? I'm telling you, like psychology is one of the main reasons why I was able to blow up because I, you can trigger people's emotions just like this. At the start of this video, I plugged the thing that I sell at Donish School, and how many times did I tell you, 
and everyone's in here and they're just like you. This is our in-group. This is our in-group. And you know, those people in the out-group, those Jeffreys who aren't on self-improvement, yeah, they're not nice people. Our, Adonis School is our in-group. Make sure you join and give me money. Powerful psychological tactics. The way you speak and the way you think, <laughs> there's a lot of power there. And so it makes sense in the case of bullying that someone who is seen as the out group, someone who is seen as the minority, the one who's different, is more likely to be targeted for so many different reasons. But if the bully feels like he's a part of this group of everyone else, and then there's the one lone kid who's different, the one brown kid, who's gonna get bullied? The literature points to show that some children believe being different from the others makes them the prime target of being bullied since they're the safest people to bully. So there's power and safety in having your own group and being similar to other people. Because imagine this, who's gonna get bullied? There's a lone skinny kid right here eating his lunch by himself, kind of weird. No one's really friends with him. And there's the guy who's in the middle of his basketball team and everyone likes him because he just got the, the shot recently. If there's a bully looking at these two options right now, which one is he gonna go for, right? It's common sense, obviously the little skinny kid who's by himself. It's common sense, but really think about that. Why is that? There's safety in numbers. This kid over here who's got his basketball team, he's got this in-group of a bunch of people who are around him right now, which you automatically, we don't need to say this, but it's, it's kind of worth clarifying. Your nervous is that the bully's nervous system and psychology is gonna instantly know, without even being conscious of this, that this is gonna be a harder target because look, these people, they've got all kind of warm, open body language together, they're laughing, they're holding eye contact, they're, they're, they're being friendly physically, which means that most likely that is his tribe. Bully's not gonna go against five, six people, is he? Solo kid, no one around, poor body language, hunched over, skinny arms. It shouldn't happen, but which one is, who is gonna be more likely to get bullied? The one by himself or the one surrounded with other people who look like him? Like if, you know, racist, for example, the racist incidents I've experienced, you know, the, the ones I told you about in high school, they were at the start. I, I went through some, um, some pretty bad stuff, but the times it's happened one time, for example, when I was on the train and, uh, this is on the news, you can go search this as well. So Sil Sylvester Saloki, just, if you search that name, he got arrested for like one and a half years. He tried to stab me and, um, he was on the train. So this guy was this, this, um, racist guy, he was drunk. He's on the train with one of his friends. They're shouting, screaming, packy this, this, you know, being racist. I'm, I'm sat like a few seats away from them. And they're just being like violent and aggressive because he blamed me for the, the Manchester bombing attack. So in, in Manchester in 2019, there was a terrorist attack at the Ariande Grande uh, festival, like stadium concert thing. And he, he kept on saying like his sister died there. I'm not sure if that was true or not, but like, yeah, he started to just bra blame brown people in general, started to like blame me. He was sat next to a woman wearing a hijab and, and this was on the train, but even before the train, there was a whole chaos on the, the station because I got to the, the train station. He's shouting at this woman in a burqa or something and she's holding a kid like proper close. All of these fucking cretins, everyone there just stood silently. You know how like white British people are just like, like NPCs, just whilst there's like shit going on, everyone's just quite, quite silent group of like Asian guys, as soon as I walked past, they kind of like looked at me a bit weird and I said, what's going on? And I've told the story multiple times, but just, I want you to imagine right now, here I am on this train with these two guys. One of them has an 11 inch knife in his waistline. And this is not bullshit. You can go literally Google his name, Sylvester Saloki. You can find a picture of him. He's literally back on the street now, somewhere in my hometown. He's there with an 11 inch blade in his waistline and he's screaming racist things. I want you to think right here, right now, on this on this part of the train, I think I was the only, like, there was me, uh, brown people, there was me, and, like, one woman who's wearing, like, the hijab or something, that's it, right? Now, imagine if on, exactly on this train, if suddenly there was 10 Asian guys, quite, like, buff-looking, like, like, brown guys, like, imagine there was, like, another 10, 15 of me taking up the seats. Would these guys have tried to bully me and this wo woman? If there was 10 guys, there might have been like more of a chaotic fight because, you know, like more like rivalry would have happened. But would these guys have felt so confident and so, so comfortable? No, right? 
the safety in numbers and, and having this in group, having this group who is similar, having the 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 us is deeply, deeply powerful because it related back to the primal ancient times. Us is one of the most important words you could say. There's very little me in natural human primal days when you think really think about it. There's no such thing as the lone warrior or any any of this bullshit. We were just there in our tribes with people who were similar to us. It was us versus them. Because that's exactly what these bullies are thinking. That's exactly what these racists are thinking. They're thinking us versus them, right? They're looking at me and thinking them. They're looking, like a bully might be looking at you thinking them. Us versus them. They're thinking the exact same thing. We need to be able to use this strategy or at least understand it ourselves to realize we need an, an us. We'll go through effective strategies on how to to develop the us, the in-group, very soon. What happens to your grades and social skills and mental health when you're getting bullied? There's a paper titled, Peer Victimization Trajectories from Kindergarten Through High School, Differenti Differential Pathways for Children, School Engagement and Achievements. So Yusuf, the research assistant, he said that this was an incredible paper. This is his words. It has a high quality study design it's a longitudinal study with where very few participants dropping out of the study over time. Kids would move out of the state and they would literally have the researchers fly over, track the kids down and make them do follow-up studies and follow-up surveys. So this was like, this is apparently like a really good piece of research for us to use and it's very interesting. So these researchers, these researchers followed 383 children from five years old to 18 years old and they measured the degree in which each child was bullied. There's three categories. One, they were bullied chronically forever, non-stop, they had no breaks. Two, they were bullied but earlier in school and it kind of stopped later on in school. And three, some were just never bullied at all. Bullied forever, bullied part-time, never bullied. They measured each child's engagement in school, how well they perceived themselves academically and how well they did with the grades. And the key study, first of all, 24% of the children that they investigated, the 383 children, 24% were in that first group. One in four, 25, like 25%, one in four. One in four children were literally bullied for the entirety of their lives, non-stop whilst they were in the education system. I would have been in this group. Genuinely non-stop from the moment that they joined five years old from kindergarten to 18 years old, the end of high school. These. 25% of children have no break. One in four. If you imagine right now three other guys that you know, maybe it's you, maybe it's one of the other three, but three other guys that you know, if you visualize yourself and, and three other guys, one of them, one of you is, is getting bullied non-stop with no breaks from the entirety of his life up until he's 18 and maybe after that as well. Maybe it's you. Kids who were chronically bullied their entire time in school had lower academic achievements. They had a greater dislike for school. They had less self-confidence. It's what we expected, but it's just, you know, sometimes the research has to clarify things that you would assume, but we want data to back it. Now we've got the data. Being bullied makes you worse in school. It doesn't build character, as some people say. It doesn't make you stronger. It genuinely makes you weaker. The kids who were bullied through their entire time performed much worse, and it was just like the ladder step. So the kids who were bullied their entire time performed the worst, the kids who were bullied part-time performed better than them, and the kids who were never bullied performed better than them.
I remember school being hard enough. You know, the system set up. So for it to be relatively difficult, especially if you don't have the right kind of brain and personality for it, you have to sit quietly in these these seats for an hour, not speak to friends and not be like adventurous and playful and, you know, get shouted at by teachers who have got their own childhood trauma that they haven't revolved, resolved. You've got these tests that are coming up, which is deeply traumatic and stressful. It is, school is hard enough as it is. And then you've got this extra thing that you need to deal with. Is there any wonder why the children who have went through something like this suffer and, and perform so much worse than their peers? I have a lot of empathy towards the younger version of myself who experienced that. School was hard enough. Getting bullied throughout the entire time of being in school was hard enough. Getting bullied by friends and, and not having low quality friends who didn't even respect you or just kept on insulting you. Getting racist, getting attacked. And then also in your one safe space at home, getting abused by your parents. When I put it like that, I really do appreciate like how tough my life has been. And if you are listening to this and you can kind of relate to that, I think a little bit of self-compassion is, will go a long way for us. Cause if, if the teachers are against us, if the bullies are against us, if our friends are against us, if our parents seemingly are against us, the one person that you can consistently have on your side is yourself. And so under scrutiny, even in jail, if you can learn to, to be your own best friend, if you can learn to have a mind that is on your side, you can go a very, very long way. And it's, it's difficult to have a brain, like a mind and thoughts that are actually positive about you when you've went through so much scrutiny and bullying. But there are very effective strategies we'll, we'll get to very soon, which will help you with this. And if you can just take my word for it, you can get to the point, even with the experiences that we've been through, you can get to the point where your brain is actually quite pleasant to, to think in. And you can build a life which is full of love and, and good relationships and purposeful, meaningful work. I did. There's another paper that I want to discuss here. It gets a lot more dark now. The paper is titled Relationship between peer victimization, cyberbullying, and suicide in children and adolescents, a meta-analysis. Yusuf said that this is very valuable because it's a meta-analysis. From the time that I studied psychology a while ago, meta-analysis, it, it means that, for example, for this study, they didn't do their own study. They just did a lot of data collection and they looked at close to 500 studies to get us a really good bit of data. So imagine that usually like, you know, the researchers would go and do their own study and then they present it. Okay, here's the facts of our study for meta analysis like this one here. They look at 500 studies to really bring you one piece of data. So that's very powerful, right? It's like a, it's like a pure level of synthesis of, of just distilling this content for like a piece of data that we can talk about. Children who were bullied, there's a 23% increase in them thinking about suicide compared to non-bullied children. And there was a 55% increase. Oh, let me say that again. There was a 55% increase in children who were bullied attempting suicide compared to those that weren't. I, I should clarify, uh, Yusuf mentioned this that we just need to clarify just because a lot of people might under misunderstand the data here. That seems like a massive jump, 55% increase. But this is based on the, the level of which people do those activities. Like for example, think about suicide or actually attempt suicide. This was an increase above that, but those numbers are relatively like, like they're alarmingly high, but also relatively low in itself. So this is what Yusuf said. He wrote this down for me. The study says up to 20% of adolescents consider suicide. If there's 100 children, 20 of them would consider... That's fucking high. Holy fuck. 20% of adolescents consider suicide. If there's 100 kids, 20 of them would consider it. 
if there was 100 who were, bu who were bullied, then up to 45 would consider it. 5% attempt ending their lives. So if there was 100 kids in, like, just imagine this, five, that can't be right. 5% of adolescents attempt suicide, like, fuck me. It probably is, honestly, like, the, the actual number of successful is probably a little bit lower, but, but the amount that attempt, I'm, I'm trying not to get, like, this video age restricted or anything, but the amount of people that attempt to do that act is actually probably higher than we think, just because the amount that are successful in doing so is quite low. But the amount that attempt it is probably, yeah, it's probably, it. that, that seems reasonable, 5%. So if there's 100 kids, 5% would attempt to do the, the big thing. If there's 100 bullied kids, then 13 would attempt to do it. He's made a note here that I should say it's 123% increase in them thinking about it and 155% increase in them attempting it. And an interesting finding about this study was that the kids who were cyberbullied were more likely to think and also attempt to end their lives than the traditional physical world. And I think that just goes to say like cyberbullying, like it used to almost seem like a joke when I was in school. You know, there was memes about it where it was just like, how cyberbullying real, just close your eyes. And you know, you can laugh about it and stuff, but it genuinely, because you have to realize the the amount of importance we place on the internet and our social medias and stuff, it's 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 a actual genuine attachment now, isn't it? It's no longer like this extra part of life that you can consider. It's literally just a part of our lives. Humans and technology have attached forever. It's just simply how it is. And so a part of our life human experience is the impact that social media and porn and all these things have, right? Like you as a young man, how much do we talk about porn and video games? We know that the internet can have a huge impact, right? So this case of like cyberbullying not being so important, oh yeah, it's just a joke, just block people. It's like, it, it's harder than it seems. And I'll make a case right here. The amount, like, and this is my fault, but I've advised a bunch of young people when, you know, they tell me, oh, they're in this group chat and there's some people who are toxic in there. You probably can relate to this. There's a group chat or there's people online on Snapchat who are just saying bad things to you. And to me, it's obvious it's just block them. And I promise you right now, that's terrible, terrible advice, which I've gave to multiple young people because not a single one of them actually does it. Because there's probably some kind of feeling of social ostracization if you block someone that you have to then go and see in school. You probably know that things are going to get worse. So it's a, it's a very prevalent, very, very hard to overcome cyberbullying. Because it's just repetitive and it's safe for the bully to just casually just mention you something, like message you something. When you come home from school, that should be your time to detach away from all of that. These days it's not. You know, there's a lot of young people who don't actually know life that is different. Back in my day, mobile phones and everything obviously were here when I was like younger. But we started to get like smartphones and iPhones when I was maybe 14, 15 years old. So, you know, already in high school. But the first few years of high school, we all had like, you know, flip phones and everything. So I'm actually kind of old when I think about it. Fuck. Damn, I'm actually, yeah, I'm actually getting a little bit old, but I kind of like that though. But yeah, so for the first like, you know, year seven, year eight, we're 13, 14, it was assumed like by the time you come home, it's like, that's school done. That's it. Maybe there was some people that you spoke to. There was like um, TeamSpeak or something. There was like software that you could use back then, MSN or something. Maybe MSN went off by then, but like it was just as kind of assumed you come home and maybe you go on Xbox Live or PSN or something with someone. That was it, but not much. These days, it's like everyone's connected with their smartphones, with Snapchat and Instagram. And, and to think about, like, imagine if you're my age right now, imagine the impact bullying and, and would have had if we were younger and, you know, those smartphones. And imagine if we genuinely, really imagine this, because it might be hard for someone my age to, like, really think cyberbullying is important. But imagine if we really valued, like, everyone else our age, our social media profiles, Instagram, TikTok. Imagine if that was genuinely something where you were socially judged and we were actually invested into our TikTok accounts when we were 14 years old. Imagine how much it would hurt when you then see someone from your school like comment something and you know, for these girls, like another popular girl could comment and say like, oh, she looks a bit fat. Imagine how much that would literally destroy the mental health of the young people today. It's, it's relentless. There's no escape from it anymore. 
I mean, there is one escape. Self-improvement, dopamine detox, detach away from technology. Certainly use technology for, a f this wasn't even part of my advice to give, but I just want to rant a little bit. This is why I do the work that I do. This is why I have the kind of vibe that I have of this. A little bit like, the thing is I use technology a lot. I work a lot, I love to work. And so I've got my, my computer here. It's like this MacBook and everything. I've got this camera, I've got my iPhone there. I work a lot, but I don't let technology ruin my life. And I will, I will be honest with you, it wasn't easy to get here. But for example, my phone is actually genuinely always on airplane mode, do not disturb, and also silent. I manually, I know this might seem crazy, I manually turn on the Wi-Fi for when I'm using it, and I manually turn it off afterwards. I use technology now in a pretty good way, but I promise you, you know, it would be so easy if I just told you, yeah, just do a dopamine detox, bro. Why don't you just do a 24-hour reset? Like, bro, I worked at this for about three years full-time. Three years full-time, I didn't really have many friends. So it was relatively easy for me to like detach away from Snapchat and stuff because I had old friends from university who I used to party with, but I just wanted to detach away from that. So I did kind of have friends. It's not like I was a loner, but I just kind of like detached away from everyone because I just didn't, I wanted to start like a new chapter of my life. And it's taken me three years to, to make this progress. Get to the point. I know that this is like, a weird piece of advice because it's not something you can implement right now, but it's a mindset and it's almost an ideal to reach for. You probably don't want to keep living life so attached to social media, so with, with mental health that's dictated by these people who aren't even good people who don't even like you, right? Social media is very bad for this. Very, very bad. Now, I saying that, I have the social media profiles. I go on them every now and then in an extremely healthy manner to the point that you probably wouldn't even believe or think that it's realistic for you. I use Instagram for maybe about 10 minutes a month. Genuinely about a month. I post maybe once a month, which takes me, you know, like a few minutes. And I also just go through like the top requests in the DMs to see if any like famous people have messaged me, which, which happens more than, than you actually think these days. That's it. That's all I do. I don't look at other messages. I don't look at who's been liking my pictures. I don't look at other profiles. I follow like 10 people and I don't even look at their stuff. In fact, actually every time I open Instagram, I kind of like almost blind my eyes to, I don't want to see anyone's posts, even my friends. The only people, the only kind of posts I actually really want to see are the pure educational ones from Dan Co. Andrew Human, Chris Williamson, you know, these people who put on Instagram don't post like thirst traps. They just post like educational stuff. And it's, you get a little bit of like a little short of, you know, 90 seconds of some practical advice from Huberman who says, oh yeah, you should do cold showers like this. Like that's a little bit of value. So what I'm saying right here is you don't have to continue the, the life that you're living that everyone else is. There's a way to detach. There's a new lifestyle that's emerging that you can hopefully see in myself the more that I will show my life to the world. Because I've detached away quite often. Every now, like I'm, I'm this big YouTuber, bro. Every now and then I'll detach away for weeks. I'll just disappear. I won't tell anyone on YouTube that I'm going. I'll just disappear for a few weeks because I just don't want to be around technology. I used to care so much about these likes and showing my, my body and stuff. And I still like to, you know, because bodybuilding means a lot to me. But for example, like, you know, I used to like really care about my hair so much and you know, it's got to look perfect. And, and I, I respect the journey of looks maxing and we're going to talk about that. But when you're just so tied to, to social media, your life changes and it, you start living this shallow life where you're actually living for these people who aren't even nice to you. You can use social media in a healthy way, technology in a healthy way. And I think that's what our ideal should be. So this could be some kind of long term goal for you to just kind of Write this down. It's not something you can really act on, but maybe just make a note of this. Maybe answer this question, which I'll, I'll ask you. What relationship do you actually want to have with technology and social media? What would be the best relationship lifestyle that you could have with the technology and social media and stuff that we have these days. Just write that down and really, when you've got the time, because this might be a deep, like almost philosophical kind of question to ask. Really think about your, your ideal life. How would you use this technology? And, and just please take one tip. Even though you can write this down, please do not expect it you to get there very quickly. I want to say again, I think I've made progress a lot faster than most people. And that's not me boasting. That's because I'm in this very privileged place where 
I got to do this stuff full time. I got like quite lucky and also, I, you know, everything aligned at the right time that I got to be on self-improvement full time because I was, this became my job. So I got to improve my life, detach away from social media, you know, all these things like meditate. I was getting paid to do it. So if it took me three years of relentless self-improvement to get to the point where I think I have a pretty healthy relationship with technology. Please, when you write this down and you think about your ideal life when it comes to technology and social media, especially when it relates to like the people who can message you on social media, these fucking bullies who are cyber bullying people. Just keep in mind that it can take a little bit of time to construct your dream life, which is absolutely fine because if that's the dream life, then it's okay if it takes you a few years to get there. Let's move on. So this is now for the adults amongst us who were bullied. And if, if for example, you're a, you're a teenager, you're not really interested in this, I, I would recommend that you listen to what we're about to say. What problems do adults who were bullied when they were younger experience? Relationships, careers. What happens to someone who was bullied and now actually ends up becoming an adult? The paper is Impact of Bullying in Childhood on Adult Health, Wealth, Crime and Social Outcomes. So this stu study took 1,420 kids within the state of North Carolina aged 9, 11, and 13, and they assessed if they had been bullies or victims of bullies. The kids were assessed every year for the next four years, and then at the ages of 19, 21, and 25, and they, they got assessed regarding their physical health, their crime, like criminal behavior, financial and education accomplishments, health of their social relationships, and Yusuf said one thing that this study does really well is that it controlled for the family hardship and psychiatric disorders, mental health problems, so that it didn't have many like confounding variables. So it, it really did seem to be the case that what we're about to discuss, the research, the results, was just because these kids got bullied. Adults who were never involved in bullying had the best physical health, the least amount of criminal behavior, had the most wealth in terms of financial success and then also in terms of education and had the best ability to keep good social relationships with their friends and also romantic relationships as we would have expected. Adults who were bullied as children, now as adults, were statistically more likely to have a worse BMI, worse physical health, worse mental health, more rates of depression and anxiety. They had lower rates of college completion they had more rates of criminal behavior. They had more rates of risk-taking behavior, taking drugs, unprotected sex, driving under the influence. And they had more problems making friends and keeping romantic relationships together. Someone who was bullied as a child statistically is more likely to experience those negative effects as an adult. So if you right now are like an adult, you're over 18, maybe you're like 22, maybe you're 25 like me, there's long-term effects of bullying and you might not even realize it, but there might be parts of your life that are suffering right now because of something that happened 10 years ago, 15 years ago. And often these things are, are, are a little bit subconscious. It's not like you wake up every day and you think, yep, I was bullied, that's why I'm a little bit overweight. You're just a little bit overweight and you've just struggled to lose the weight. If you don't use the right strategies to overcome what's happened, the future does seem worse. The good thing is that we actually do have the right strategies here. So here is an actionable step for you. The best actionable steps, like the real actionable steps are just gonna come soon. We go over the strategies. I just wanna educate you. I just wanted to educate you on some of the topics, but the actionable step just right now, I've heard that you can aid your learning when you recap. So you probably, if you're a student, you probably know this. The more you recap a subject, the more you learn it. So right, right, right here, right now, I almost want to just slightly test you. Don't look at your notes. Don't rewind the video. Just pause the video in a second and just recap what you've learned. And the, the way to do this, write it as a comment on this video, what you've learned so far. It can be one point or it could be like, you know, summarizing as much as you've learned. It'd be interested to see who's learned the most. Write it as a comment of this on this video. And admittedly, that's going to help me too because the more comments that come, then the YouTube algorithm will share this video to more people and it can help even more people. So it's a win-win for both of us. Go and recap what you've learned without looking at your notes right here, right now, maybe as a comment, you can even do it in a document if you just want to. Let's begin with the actual real strategies on what to do 
as a teenager who are, who's getting bullied right now, there's three practical, effective tactics. We're going to start this, and I need to rant slightly. Most people have the exact wrong idea on how to stop bullying. Most people give terrible advice when it comes to stopping bullying. The most common, I saw this in, in, in a graph, I'll hopefully link below. The most common strategy that people think is effective is ignoring it. The most common strategy that people recommend to others who are dealing with bullies is to ignore it. This is what I see every time someone mentions something like this in Adonis School or in the YouTube comments or just in general, everyone replies back and says, oh, just ignore it, bro. Just ignore it. Yeah, just be, like, you know, be the bigger person and just ignore it. 10 out of 10 idiotic advice. The worst, one of the worst things that you can do if you're getting bullied, Really think about this. Now that I'm saying it, it's probably common sense. If you're getting bullied and you ignore it and you know they slap the back of your head and you're just there like, yeah, I'm a Sigma male, I'm not going to do anything. You've just taught the bully that it's okay to mess with you. Just ignore it, bro. Oh, you know, like someone will ask, oh yeah, one of my friends always insults me. He makes, he makes disrespectful jokes and always, there's always at least one, maybe sometimes so many people. We need to get this into our, into our minds. All of us right now will never recommend. Just ignore it, bro, because it doesn't work, right? Because all of us keep recommending this to each other, victim to victim, victim to victim. It doesn't work for anyone because when you ignore it, that person isn't punished for their behavior and so they keep doing it. You're not negatively like reinforcing their behavior at all. You're just letting them get away with zero consequences. So when that bully, the friend, insults you again and disrespects you with, and he says it's just a joke, if you just, <laughs> and you just ignore it, and oh, some other people recommend, oh, just laugh about it, bro. Just laugh, just laugh at yourself. Would you tell younger me to continue calling myself a packy in front of my friends? Because it didn't work. Doing nothing doesn't work and laughing at yourself doesn't work. It makes things worse. You treat, you, you tell these people who are hurting you that there's no consequences. Enough. They need to feel pain for picking on you. They need, say this with me, they need to feel pain for picking on me. And I'm not even saying that we need to physically harm these people. But just think about it in, in, with your like common sense brain. Just think they need to feel some kind of friction, pain, embarrassment, punishment every single time they do something to you, don't they? You already know about habits and stuff, don't you? You already know that if there's a bit of pain and friction to doing a habit, you probably won't do it. But if a habit feels good or if, a, if like, a, like a bad habit has no consequences, you'll keep doing it, won't you? You, what, you've probably heard of, of the book Atomic Habits by James Clear. Why don't we just copy what he's saying, but with, instead of with habits, with bullies? Because right now, everyone's giving you the advice. Think about how stupid this is. Everyone's telling you the advice of like, you know, what James Clear would say, with the bully, make it painless for him. Make it so that there's no consequences. Make it so that there's no friction for him. You're helping the bully every single time you stay silent. Every single time one of those people says that inf insulting joke to you again, oh, it's just a joke, bro. And you just kind of like laugh about it and you laugh at yourself, which is like the lowest testosterone move you could ever make. Trust me, I know. You're not helping the situation. You're actually making it worse. One hundred percent of the time, from now on, vow with me and I will vow with you too. One hundred percent of the time, when you realize that someone is disrespecting you or insulting you, you must say something. You must do something. Ignoring it and laughing at their joke and, you know, being self-deprecating conditions them to do it more. And trust me when I say, not just with bullying, but just trust me when I say with everyone. You know, with that kind of person who laughs at you and makes jokes about you, trust me when I say... If you don't stop that immediately, they will start to believe the things that they say about you. And worse of all, you will start to believe those things too. So when that one friend constantly calls you ugly or says that you're this or says that you're this, you genuinely will start to believe. You know this, right? Because you look at yourself in the mirror so much more and you become so much more insecure after hearing these like these little jokes. So you know that they're not harmless. You know that it's not just a joke. You know that it affects you. So how about some authenticity? How about being honest with yourself and thinking to yourself, no, you know what? It does actually pain me. That's why I've been sat here listening to Hamza for the last hour. It's not something that you ignore ever again. 
100% of the time, if you can help it, if you can be aware and conscious enough, 100% of the time from now on, you will do something. You will use one of these three strategies which will be deeply, deeply more effective than just ignoring it and being the butt of the fucking joke. I don't blame you for quite frankly going about this like a pussy, like I did. That's the pussy way to do things. We're not pussies anymore. The amount of fucking weight that you've been lifting in the gym and, that, and how disciplined you've been, the fact that you've you've literally like won a, in a battle for your attention against the social media nerds, against the, like the, the video game companies and porn companies. If you can do that, then you can literally just say something to when these bullies or just random people insult you. Never let them insult you. I'm gonna, you know, I'm, I'm gonna tell you a story I didn't plan to tell. But I was, when I was in Dubai with Sam, Sam was like a friend of mine, and we were in the car one time, and we had someone else in the car, whatever it was, and I ended up making a joke about him. I ended up making a joke, which usually would have been fine if it was just me and him, and you know, we're just laughing and stuff. But there was someone else in the car with us that we had just met in the first day. And I made a joke about, I, I won't go into details, just out of respect, but I made a joke that was just about his relationships, let's say. And he looked at me, and I was so surprised that he did this. And he looked at me and he was like, bro, don't joke about that. That's, that's all he did. And I literally instantly, I was like, I put my hand on his shoulder. I was like, oh yeah, you're right, you're right, fair enough. My respect for him just doubled instantly. I told, I made like a, a little bit of a insulting joke that usually could have been fine with our vibe, but maybe it was a bit more inappropriate because there was someone else here and it was a joke that he didn't like. And he just said it, he just, he just went, bro, don't joke about that. That was it. He didn't swear at me, he didn't think about, he didn't escalate or anything. Now imagine if he let me joke about it. Just think about it. It's just a j imagine if I, oh, it's just a joke, bro. Imagine if he let me joke about it. And he, imagine if he like laughed too, the equivalent of me calling myself a packy. Imagine if he just kind of laughed about this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my relationships are like this, right? What would have that done? What, what would have happened with that? I would have been slightly more likely to make that kind of joke, but probably a lot more likely to make that joke again, right? Because he's just laughed at it, he's ignored it, he's shown me a bit of reinforcement and maybe I got a couple of laughs. That's positively reinforcing me to make the exact same kind of joke again. Since that moment, I'll, I'll never make a joke like that again because he's made it clear he doesn't like that and I respect him, he's a friend. It's as simple as that. Now I'm gonna give you some real practical and like genuine things that you can say, which are gonna be a little bit extreme if you wanna like stop this bullying ASAP. It's very important that you agree with me here. You must do something. Ignoring it and laughing at the bully's jokes is genuinely the least effective. You can go and ask every person. Like literally, just think to yourself right now. The, the kid who just ignores it, you can probably visualize one in, in high school, the kid who ignored it or laughed at the, the jokes. He was getting picked on and bullied all year. He was the 24% the, the of people who get chronically bullied because people just got an easy hit out of him. But imagine that one kid who thrashes and fights and never lets go and literally argues back. There's usually a buildup of tension and like maybe sometimes a fight or maybe sometimes, you know, some like verbal argument that kind of scares you a little bit. But that kid wasn't picked on again. He wasn't living in fear after that. He wasn't going to school every single day with his self-esteem dropping every single time he laughed at a joke aimed at him. When people joke about you and it's insulting, it's not a joke. It's literally just an insult that they say with this sly look on their face, knowing that you're a pussy who won't do anything about it. So the first strategy that you can use is to shock them into realizing that you won't take that shit anymore. And by shock them, I mean get loud, shout, and specifically, there's a few tactics, like psychological manipulative things that we can use here. I'm gonna teach you some dark things. You need to, the first strategy is just make it clear that you're not a safe space for their aggression. Right now, they feel safe with no consequences to pick on you. He walks past you, slaps your head, you're not gonna do anything, so he's gonna do it again. He's gonna make an insult about you, he's gonna tell a, a joke about you, you're not gonna do anything, so it's safe for him to do these things. We need to make it unsafe, we need to make it painful, we need to punish him and make him feel bad and especially make him feel embarrassed, make him feel disgusted and make him feel targeted by everyone when he does anything towards you. We're gonna use some Manipulative shit right now. Shock them into realizing that you will not take disrespect. Whenever they do something now, 100% of the time, let's say the, the example is that 
he slaps the back of your head or he takes your book or something, right? Instantly, shout, get loud. Get loud, shout, and especially look at them in disgust. Shout, for example, and let me just tell you something, right? People are herd animals, by the way. You see, people aren't actually that intelligent or actually they're so intelligent that they're almost stupid in a way. So the way to instantly get everyone on your side in this situation, the bully's just slapped your head or he said something mean again, right? The way to instantly scare the bully, make him feel a deep level of pain and but also do this in a way that everyone's looking at him as the bad guy is to just have amplified body language and certain kind of language. So this is exactly, I'll, I'll role play it. This might seem kind of cringe, but I just want you to really get the example instead of me saying something vague. So it's gonna seem a little bit cringe of me pretending to be a fucking teenager, but like I hope that you can just get value out of it and I'm just sacrificing my self-esteem from like, just look, the bully walks past, slaps the back of your head. Though. Exactly what you should do is, ah, what, get up, what, what are you doing? Get away from us, dude, like that. Like hold your hands like this. If if anyone, I'm telling you right now, even if someone's slightly blind, if they slightly see you with your hands like this, pulling back away from this guy, they will instantly with their primal brain within a literally a split second, assume he is the bad guy, you are the good guy. You are like someone who's being unfairly hit. What do you do? Get away, get away, get away from us. Us, get away from us. Not just me, not just me. Get away from us. Get like, literally you can like get like fucking like, go go crazy on this one man. Like get away from us. You can point at someone else. Get away from us. Pretend you're almost like protecting someone else. Get away from us. He's being weird. Ah, like start looking to other people. He's being weird. Get away from us. We don't like, what are you doing to us? The, the, the language that you use here is very important. You do not want it to seem like a 1v1. You want it to seem like he's doing something weird and aggressive or just shocking to you and other people. You almost want it to look like you're, you're almost protecting multiple people. And I'm telling you right now, it's gonna be slightly embarrassing in a way because you need to do this loud. You, I'm giving you permission right now to disrupt every single classroom at the entire school when this shit happens because the entire school should be disrupted. A bully should not be able to get away from this. The class should be disrupted. If a child is being abused, the class should be stopped and everyone should look at the bully, right? So I'm giving you my own permission, how mu however much that's worth, that if the next time you're physically harmed or, or psychologically harmed, you can get so loud and do something so amplified that the teacher and everyone's gonna stop. And sure, the teacher might like to say, oh, you know, why, why are you shouting? But it's gonna be clear that someone's doing something to you. And if you use certain language, instantly, like people's primal stupid monkey brain will just believe you. Get away from us, like with your hands like this. Get what are you doing? He's being weird. <laughs> Look at them, especially in disgust. This is a big one. Look at the, the bully does something. Let's say it's a bit more friendly and he just kind of says a j joke, right? Look at the bully, like suddenly he has literally just stank the worst smell you've ever smelt in your life. He is 10 out of 10, pure disgust. Oh, 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 get away, you're disgusting. You're disgusting. What's wrong with you? What's wrong, stop being weird. Imagine how embarrassed he's gonna be when you're this loud, everyone's looking, you've got this kind of like, like, you know, almost frightened language which showed, body language which shows everyone who the, who the, like the bad guy is. And you're using this certain tactics, get away from us. You're disgusting, stop being disgusting, you're being weird. You can look over to the teacher, miss he's being weird, it's like, use his name, Alex is being weird, Alex is being weird. Stop it, Alex, stop, stop. What's wrong with you? We, ha we haven't done anything to you, get away from us. He's being weird to us, miss. He is going to feel deeply embarrassed and pain, like pained. This is gonna be some kind of punishment for him. Now I know that you might have some limiting beliefs right now, some counter thoughts, and, and certainly some of them could be valid, but what, this is powerful because one, you don't need to physically harm this guy back. You know, a lot of people just kind of throw the advice out there like, oh yeah, you just be physical, bro. Just just punch him and just just like kill him, bro. Like it's very, it's very unreasonable to assume that because no offense, but chances are, if you're getting bullied, you're probably not like that strong, right? You're probably not just there just yet. You're building, you're going to the gym, you're, you know, you're learning these things, fantastic. But right now, you probably would, if you're really honest, you probably would prefer not to get into a physical fight with this bully. Now, don't don't bullshit, yeah, yeah oh, yes, I would. If you would, then you would have done it already. So don't, shut the fuck up, right? So just be honest with yourself. You probably would prefer, like, look at your actions. Your actions have, have shown us that you probably would prefer not to get into a physical fight. So this is one of the best things you can do. This is using, like, the heard as part of your community 
get away from us. We're, we're, we're forcing and manipulating this dynamic of this us versus them. It's us. He's disturbing us. And look, he's being so dangerous. And you're literally like this, like, you know, with these hands up there. It, it, this could be very, very effective. Now, this is very important. Every single time that they do something, you need to act like this. Every single time. You must make it so that they psychologically start to associate bullying you with this like, bit, like you know, this shocking embarrassment that they get. Because think about it, they bully you because they associate it with a quick little bit of dopamine from just like, you know, looking at you squirm and whimper a little bit, don't they? That's it. That's all that happens. So they get a bit of pleasure from, from making fun of you. They get a little bit of pleasure from hurting you. They like the sound of your whimpers. If that doesn't piss you off like it. And so what we need to do is to condition them to realize, to just instantly believe that if they do something to you, everyone's going to look, it's going to be embarrassing, it's going to be awkward. You're, you can visualize your bully's face getting red as fuck if everyone looked over and you did that thing, right? You could almost visualize them with this stupid little face getting red, right? So if you did that once, guess what's going to happen? It's going to get worse. I'm just going to be honest with you. If you do this once... The next time the bully sees you, he's going to hurt you more. Unless if that, that time you do it again, whether you're outside, whether you're inside, no matter where you are, if you get loud, if you get loud and use the same kind of language, the same thing, get away from us, look at him like he's pure, disgusting, like he stinks. Every single time his aggression towards you will go up and then sharply down because he'll realize that you're not taking shit anymore. He'll realize, and, and not only that will he realize, but other people will start to actually defend you. The teacher will genuinely start to defend you. And so what, let, let, me, let me ask you this. Worst case scenario, you do this in the middle of a class, and you've got this one asshole teacher who doesn't really understand and says that you're being loud and he makes you like stand outside the room for a few minutes. It's like, so, so losing your self-esteem because of this bully, him physically harming you, him psychologically abusing you is a lot worse than like some dumb teacher who's just said like, oh, well, you just raised your voice. So you've got to go stand outside. It's like, go stand outside and feel proud of yourself. Just know if this happens to you and like the teacher is a bit annoying to you or whatever, just know that I'm proud of you. You go stand outside of that classroom and think to yourself, yeah, Hamza's proud of me and I'm proud of myself. That's more important as well. So this is important. You must make this pact with me right now. 100% of the time, you must do something which makes the bully feel some kind of pain. I would recommend it not being physical, and but rather it being loud and embarrassing for him. You must do something 100% of the time. And this is important because it might feel slightly like cringe. Even if they do something small. Even if they do something, you know how footballers, have you seen like clips of footballers, how they react where like someone will just kind of like, you know, they'll do this to each other and the guy will be like, Ugh. you need to act like a footballer. They do that. It's not, like, it seems cringe, but the thing is they do that because they're playing by the rules. They're actually smart when, when a footballer or a soccer player, like you weirdos here, when like a footballer overreacts, they're doing it because it's part of the rules of the game. They're actually intelligent by doing it, right? So you play the rules of the game, act like a footballer. That's like the, the phrase you can have, act like a footballer, be overly dramatic, you know, look like, they don't just like, the footballer doesn't just get hit and then, you know, this happens and he goes over to the ref, oh, he, excuse me, the other one, he just he just touched me like this. They don't do that, do they? they? They like get proper dramatic and they like point towards the guy who's doing something because that's the game, that's the name of the game. So act like a footballer, over dramatize what's happening and that what's gonna happen is, He's going to do the normal stuff he usually does, so you can start to mentally prepare of that. But what might happen, is he might progressively deload what he does to you, and he might hurt you a bit less. He might, for example, do something a lot smaller. He might, like, you know, walk past and say something a little bit quieter to you. Like, you know, he'll change what he does. Slowly, he'll start to drop it. You have to still act like a footballer, even when he's, like, he might subtly walk past with a bit of a shy face and say, like, oh, stop crying. Get, get away from, stop talking to us. Stop. Just leave us alone every single time because imagine he's already feeling beaten down at this point and he's walked past said a little swear word to you whilst he's looking kind of shy now because you've just made him embarrassed five minutes ago and imagine if you just do it like if you do it again he is beaten into submission he now is not going to mess with you but you must do this every single time you must shock them to feel some kind of pain and embarrassment and if you disrupt the entire class bro I personally support you and I really wish some like adult that I like respected said that to me. Who cares? You disturb the class for two minutes, but you get to 
be less likely to attempt to end your life. It's like, I, I give you permission to do that. The second way to stop bullying that's currently happening is to not allow a power imbalance. Remember at the start of this video, or about halfway through, I mentioned the definition of bullying had like the three things. There was the intention to harm, repetitiveness, and the power imbalance in favor of the bully. The bully's more powerful. Long term, you can start to reverse this power imbalance. Because let me tell you a story, right? I told you about me. I got bullied relentlessly, racist, even after I left school, racist, genuinely tried to stab me, bro. That's not even, I'm not even being dramatic. He, he had an 11 inch knife on him. Fuck me, right? So I've, I've had that stuff. And when I started to go to clubs and, you know, nightclubs and parties, there was a bit of like hostility there. I wouldn't call it bullying because no longer it was like repetitive. It was just kind of on this night. Someone brushes in and someone does this or someone looks at me weird. Like this, this stuff used to happen. Guess what? This is, so, this is so interesting, right? As soon as I bulked above 180 pounds, there has been zero people who have ever tried to mess with me in public. I will say that again. As soon as I bulked above 180 pounds, zero people have ever tried to mess with me in public. And I know this, this is going to seem cringe what I'm about to say. I just want to tell you for your own support and some other people will say that this is cringe. When I bulk up above 180 pounds, 190, and you know, you get to this like point where you're thick, the kind of people who you would have expected to like bully you or insult you or to, you know, have this kind of hard look at you and maybe like walk past you and try and like ch shoulder check you a little bit. I swear to God, when I got to about 190 pounds, men started to act like beta male chimps around me. I know that this sounds cringe, but I, I, like it, you probably won't even believe what I'm about to say because it sounds so cringe, but there, I'm going to seem like a liar apart from to the guys who have actually bulked and actually know exactly what I'm talking about. When you get physically, not just muscular, you know, not just like TikTok boy lean, but when you get thick and when you start to fill out size large t-shirts and you train your neck and maybe you grow the beard or whatever it is, right? Other men start to act like how you used to see, you know, the little zoo TV shows of animal kingdoms and you see like the little chimps like grooming each other and, and everyone grooms like the little alpha male. I'm not saying that I'm alpha or anything, but trust me when I say like people start to act like little beta male chimps next to you. Like, I know this seems cringe, but I'm gonna give you some examples. I went to a club once and I wasn't used to this, but I had just bulked up like 20 pounds from the last time that I went, you know, it was a long time. Genuinely, there was multiple times, like one guy came over to me and he like, he literally fixed my necklace. He was like, oh, bro, the, the thing's on the wrong side. He fixed it. Yeah, you look really good, bro. The other necklace is good. And like, how long have you been going gym for, bro? How have you done this? The kind of guy who, who would have looked like someone who would have like passively called me a packy was literally like asking me gym questions with a smile on his face. And he ended up like fixing my necklace because it was like, you know, the, the back part was like there for example people like moving out of the way even still to these days people will like move out the way and actually apologize to me and i'm not even trying to pretend like i'm i'm some like sick guy bro i'd get like some skinny little boxer could fucking twat me i'm i'm still humble trust me but i'm just telling you from what i've experienced and i'm saying this for your benefit bulking and getting a bigger physical size and bigger body weight is fantastic. Now you don't just want this with just pure fat because obviously chubby kids get bullied. But if you can bulk whilst going to the gym really, really hard, it will transform your life. Because think about it. I don't have research for this, but I personally believe that size is one of the, probably the most important factor to getting people's respect physical size. Now on surveys, people might say it's intelligence, it's humility, it's personality characteristics. Bro, Those some of these surveys are bullshit because if you literally, like people don't know your intelligence, right? When you walk through the street, people aren't asking you for your story. They're not asking you for your intelligence. They're not asking if you're like, if you've got narcissistic traits or if you're a bit more empathetic. People don't know these things. They literally just look at you like a fucking meat object to assess 90% of what they like think about you is based on the first impression. You've heard that stuff before, right? The first impression is made in like two seconds and that forms like someone's 90% of the thing. So what's going to be the first impression? Now sure, looks and all these little micro things, but the biggest thing is just simply like your size, just the size of you. So if you can just get a bigger size, you don't even need to be like aesthetic or athletic for this. If you just get a bigger size, but slightly don't look fat, no one is going to mess with you. Now, I certainly think you can go the wrong way. I don't want you to get into what I call the anxiety bulk, where you start to bulk and eat more because you're thinking, yeah, no one's gonna mess with me. You should still have your normal fitness goals. You should still think to yourself, well, yeah, you know, I'm gonna bulk at like a moderate pace. I'm gonna do it in a healthy way. I'm not gonna eat junk food. 
but I'm just telling you from my experience, as soon as I got above 170 pounds, I'm quite like a skinny tall guy, not tall, but like I'm, I'm six foot one, so I'm like fairly taller than what's average, but I'm quite like skinny boned. As soon as I got above 170 pounds, the amount of respect that I got from random strangers went up to the point now where I genuinely feel like, like I'm not picked on in the in the modern day literally it's just it's it's a night and day difference now people could have just been nicer in the last 4 years the entire world could have just been nicer or it's just the fact that i just look a little bit bigger and maybe the beard as well so to reverse the power imbalance is the second strategy that you can do the first one bulk get a bigger size second maybe learn to fight maybe martial arts self defense and third very interestingly achieve a higher status in the peer group through lux maxing you see power and status especially for young people who are like who are getting bullied right now a lot of it like we heard before about 50 percent of kids say it's about your physical appearance that's why you're getting bullied so one of the biggest things that you can do to elevate your status and, and essentially achieve more power as a young person is to lux max and to look more attractive there's tons of videos you can go watch for free to lux max you probably know about mewing and going to the gym and eating clean and doing skincare routines go and follow a bunch of them go and get like a nice style that suits you that you look quite fashionable because if you let me just say if you instantly go up one hour of 10 in attractiveness let's say you're like a four out of ten right now and you go up to a five or you're a five and you go up to a six you will literally get more respect more love more social connection you will literally i know this is stupid you will get higher grades if you change nothing but became slightly more attractive you would genuinely get higher grades in your work and even if you didn't even write anything different teachers literally give higher grades to the same work just on a more attractive kid. It's, it, the world is blackpilled a little bit, right? So I think the black pill is the truth, but I, I think the lux maxing pill, I think you can lux max a lot more than like what the black pillars believe. I think you can actually get to a really, really good level. So what I'm saying is go and elevate your status through lux maxing. You can go find a bunch of my videos. You literally just go onto YouTube. It's all for free. Search on YouTube, Hamza lux maxing, Hamza physical attractiveness, Hamza bulk, Hamza size, whatever you want to search for. And just make that one of your long-term goals because I know it can seem shallow to think, oh yeah, but you know, improving your looks, you shouldn't be obsessed with it. The truth is, if, you're an, if you are an intelligent young man, you know how important it is. And so this is the game, whether you like it or not. You are playing this game whether you like it or not. So if you're playing this game, you may as well just get a higher score in this game, right? You have to play this game of physical attractiveness. You have to. It's just the game that we automatically have to play in this like modern world society. It's just how it works. And so you can complain about this. Imagine being on a video game. You're literally in League of Legends right now complaining about the mechanics of the game. It's like, bro, you're in the game anyway. Just fucking play. Like, just, you know the rules. So why not just play as best as you can? It's like what the footballers do. It's like, you know the rules. You can complain about it and sit there and say, we should, the rules should be changed. Or you could just get good at the game and just learn how to mew and learn how to like go to the gym and build some muscle and eat more protein and drink more water and do those things. Get a nicer hairstyle. Now, obviously you're taking advice from someone who hasn't had a haircut in like two months. Things are a little bit different now that I'm 25, almost 26 years old. It's like what's seen as attractive and valued for people who I respect and, and who are in my kind of space is very different. If I was genuinely, if I was like 15, 16, I would be like literally look like investigating TikTok boys, seeing the style that's attractive and like meticulously designing that in myself because it's smart to do that. You will genuinely get higher status and a better life, the better that you can do that. And the third way to stop the bullying that's currently happening is to stay near friends and to tell people about it again, 100% of the time. Remember that that example I gave you? Who's more likely to be bullied? The little kid sat by himself or the kid sat amongst his basketball team? It's a no-brainer. The one sat by himself, it's common sense. So not only be around friends, but specifically, because a lot of people don't do this. You know, a lot of kids get bullied who have got friends, who have got good parents, and those people don't even know that he's getting bullied. Specifically, you need to tell someone, and this is like weird advice that I really like hope it's practical. 100% of the time that you, that something happens with the bully or that you just simply think about the bully or that you fear the bully or whatever it is, 100% of the time you should tell someone. So this literally means genuinely up to 20 times a day, you could tell your friends that I'm scared that the bully will do this. Five minutes later, no, 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 but I, I'm scared that he's gonna do this. 
10 minutes later, I'm scared that he's gonna do this. Oh, he's just done it, he's just done it, and I'm really upset and stuff, and you know, he's just doesn't done this again. To your parents, 20 times a day you're telling them, 20 times a day you go up to the teacher and you tell them, I'm scared that he's gonna do this. No, 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 miss, I don't wanna go to the next, like, you tell them the authentic thoughts, I'm scared that if I go to the next class, he's gonna do something. I'm scared that, I'm, like, imagine, because if that's how you're actually feeling, imagine how seriously the teachers, your parents and your friends will actually take it when you're actually being honest. Because if you think about it, you probably think about this bully 20, 50 times a day, especially when you're in school, but no one knows. You've mentioned it, like how many times? Once or twice to the teacher. You've mentioned it maybe once, maybe zero times to your parents, maybe a few times to your friends. Why? It, it's not logical to keep it inside. It's way more logical to just be authentic. The moment you fear that he's gonna, he hasn't even done anything, but the moment you fear that he's gonna do something, literally go and tell the teacher, Lit every single time. Imagine if the teacher has you come up to them, or if this teacher doesn't help, then the next one, then the next one, then the dinner lady, whatever, what, like whoever can support you. Imagine going up to the same person 10, 20 different times in the day, they would begin to take it seriously. And there's, there's 50 different authority figures in the school that you could go to. Go and knock on the fucking head teacher's door and literally just tell him, it like, and just be totally honest and just say to yourself, like, if you've, like, bro, if you've considered ending your life for this, or if you've considered harming yourself, you can go to like the person who's highest up in the school that you can just, you know, don't even make an appointment, just like literally go to the, the best, biggest office you can do and just tell them the truth and just say like, I, I don't know if this is the right place, but like, I'm really scared for my safety. And then, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll calm it down and they'll say, oh yeah, it's fine. They'll listen to you. Then they'll tell you to go away. The moment you get another thought, genuinely 30 seconds later, you go back and tell them, I'm scared. I don't want to go to the class. I don't want to, you know, because he's going to do something. I know he's going to do something. I know it. Then they calm you down, okay, you don't have to go to this class, but you'll go to the next one, okay, whatever. Five minutes later, you get another thought, which is a fear of pain, and you go back to the same person and annoy them again and tell them, no, because I, I am scared that he's going to hurt me. Imagine if someone, like an authority figure in the school, genuinely knew how much you were thinking about this guy. That's when the teacher would help you. This is why I said at the start, I don't blame the teachers that much, because on average, the kids who are getting bullied only tell them maybe once, maybe... I didn't even ever tell any of my teachers that this stuff was happening just because of multiple reasons. You don't want to seem like a snitch. You don't want to, you know, seem like a weak person. For me, it was like, I didn't want to seem like a victim. Fuck it. Fuck it, bro. I'd rather you feel like a victim because you've, you've been authentic to how you feel with someone whose job is to help you than to, for you to go down that route of like lifelong consequences. Every single time, tell someone about it. And, and with friends, you'll know who's a real friend because if someone gets annoyed at you, ah, oh, stop talking about it, they're not real friends. You'll know if someone's a real friend. If you mention this, like this is my judgment of a real friend. If you mention to a friend that you're getting bullied by this guy, a good friend, you'll literally see his face look stern towards him and you'll literally almost see him like fucking, like I know this is cringe, but like almost like you'll see his face or like a little bit growl like a fucking wolf toward, because this is primal shit, right? This is like fuck, fuck like modern day humanity. This is primal shit. If you say to someone who is in your tribe that there is another like man, like male who's hurting you, if this male that you've said this to likes you, he will genuinely, like his fucking nervous system without his control will activate to the point that he genuinely is getting like a rise in testosterone, cortisol, adrenaline, and he's literally like, his primal brain's ready for a fucking fight to the death. Modern day, we don't do this stuff, but our nervous system hasn't changed in, in 10,000 years. You will genuinely see the men who like you, the males who like you, they will like, it, it's something primal inside of them. You will literally see them look with like fucking anger as if they could like squeeze the, the throat of this, this guy who's doing this. You know that that's a man who cares about you. Then the little dumbass friend you've got who just kind of laughs and says, oh bro, just stop it. Stop like talking about it. He's not your friend. So every single time. Now, here is a free and effective way for you as an adult. So for the adults here who have who were bullied, remember the set, second cat category, kids who were bullied right now, repetitively, consistently, long-term, kids who were bullied, but it stopped, kids who were never bullied. This is for these guys, the ones who were bullied, but now that you're a bit older, it's like, it's just stopped now. Whether you're like my age, or maybe you're still in school, but you used to get bullied, but it stopped. 
it would be important for you to have the humility to realize that there might be things inside of you that are, are a little bit negative because of that experience, but you've not really been able to identify that it's happening because of bullying. Remember that we said the kids who were bullied as adults had worse BMI, more likely to take like risk taking behavior, criminal record, worse education. These, these almost things that you wouldn't have thought are happening because you got bullied 10 years ago. So hopefully you've got the humility to know this. Maybe for you, it's a lot more clear and you're like, yeah, like, you know what? Like I, I got bullied to the level that I know is still harming me. And here is a free and effective strategy that you can use right now within like literally this video to actually start to heal from that. So Yusuf told me that the most promising and studied way to heal through this kind of stuff is with trauma focused therapies. When you look at research like we've done for this video, you're going to see like, like, in the books kind of advice. You're gonna see, you know, these are professional researchers who have been doing all these studies. And so when you ask like a professional researcher, what's like the best way to heal from something, he's gonna say therapy because they've kind of got to, right? Whether or not you agree with therapy, I kind of don't, I got it wasn't really effective. I think self-improvement's more effective. What we can do is actually just take what they do inside of therapy, but just do it for free. Because if I sat here, the thing is, it would I would sound more professional if I sat here and just said to you like, yeah, just consider professional help. And I just ended the video, wouldn't I? I actually, that would be better for my YouTube channel. More people are gonna disagree with me and criticize me when I'm telling you like to not consider therapy. The thing, the thing is, if I told you right now, less than like 1% of people, less than 0.1%, less than 0.001% of people would actually like go and get therapy because it's, it's expensive and there's a lot of friction to getting it. And for guys, it doesn't really work. Literally for men, like therapy is not actually that as effective as you think it is. But there is something that we can do, which I do genuinely believe is effective. You can do this right now for free. It's a journaling practice. Now, just quick disclaimer, when you're doing this kind of psychological work, it might fuck you up. So just do this safely. You need to know, I don't know you like right now, if you get me, like, you know, I'm making this video is almost like, I know you enough to give you good advice, but at the same time, you need to just understand that when you do kind of psychological work, you might break down crying. You might end up like bringing up trauma or something, but I do think that this could help you. So this is a journaling practice that we can just title reframe the story. And there's a few steps. Number one, journal about what happened. Tell the story. Tell the story however you want in a journal of what happened. I highly recommend you do this on paper. The paper is just deeply more therapeutic than doing this on, on, on digital, right? I'm telling you right now, as someone who's journal, like my full-time job has been to journal and to be on self-improvement. I've tested both. You're not that different to me if you're thinking, oh, but you know, like Notion might be nice, bro. You will get a lot more benefit if you do this on pen and paper. Oh, but my but my handwriting's not that. Just, just shut up, bro. Can we, your handwriting doesn't need to be good, bro. No one's gonna mark and assess your work. You don't even need to read it. It's just you get therapeutic benefits from just simply writing. Oh, but I haven't held a pen in like just just do it on piece of pen and piece of paper, right? Tell the story of what happened with the bully. Understand the bully's actions. It wasn't about you. So in in your page. Write first to write the story. Then second, write and try to understand and ask yourself the question like, why did the bully act this way? What caused the bully to be like this? He might have been getting fucked by his uncle. It's not, it's not as, as unlikely, as unreasonable as you think it is. He genuinely might have been getting molested by a family member. He genuinely might have seen some traumatic thing. He might have been, might have been attacked by his family pit bull when he was three years old and never recovered. He might genuinely be, be getting fucked by a male family. Like literally when you think about it, it's not as unreasonable as you actually think. Or the most reasonable thing is that he's genuinely getting beaten up at home. I know that that seems like weird for me to say, but like you've got to understand someone's action. So if you imagine that's what's happening to him, it doesn't excuse his actions, but understanding what someone is going through, why they did what they did is powerful because it just kind of takes the self blame away because until you do this, until you really write down, maybe he was getting fucked by his uncle. Your subconscious believes that you were the bad person. So write down a few reasons as to why he could have been acting like this. And maybe it's one of your friends, maybe it's like your own parents. Write down some of the reasons that you kind of statistically know you've heard of research or whatever it is that could be kind of reasonable. You could kind of guess it with the, what you know about this, this bully. The third thing you can write is, how could you be grateful for what happened? How could you be grateful for the fact that you got bullied? Maybe consider that this is like your hero's start to the journey. You know, in every superhero movie, 
The superhero usually starts by getting bullied by a couple of guys, don't they? It gives you more of a reason to grow and develop. And, and certainly at the start of this video, I said that, you know, it's not something that like is a positive thing and it's not, it's not excusable. But right here, right now, is there something that we can be grateful for with this bullying? Is there anything that you can think of that you've actually kind of like benefited because it happened? Maybe not net positive, but just where it's led you to. Maybe you wouldn't have gotten onto self-improvement and learned about other things. Maybe you wouldn't have been so consistent in the gym if it wasn't for this. And then number four, and most importantly, rewrite the story, but in an empowering way. Rewrite exactly what happened. Like t imagine you're telling the story to someone in the journal, but write it in an empowering way where However you, I won't give you more instructions, but just write it in a way where now with this understanding, now with this gratitude, the story's changed. Before the story was that someone hurt you and you were the victim. Now you're realizing that like, he was the victim himself. Now you're realizing that you actually developed and you've gotten onto self-improvement and you're on a fantastic trajectory. And so you kind of have to be grateful for everything that happened before this. When you write this new story, force yourself to believe that narrative. Force yourself to believe the new narrative that you've just wrote down. Almost write it down as if it's like this finished piece of work where this is like, you can look at it and be like, yep, this is my life. This is my life. Put it up there. This is my life. This is the story of what happened to me in high school. This happened. This guy did this, but I know why he did this because this was happening to him. This is the effect it had on me. It was negative, but I've been able to overcome it. And it actually got me onto self-improvement. And now I'm Jack. Now I've made loads of good progress. And I'm like this caliber of person. This is like the hero's start of the journey for me. So now I just wanna wrap up by telling you a full plan of action so that you, we can just summarize literally actionable steps that I really wanna challenge you and I want you to vow, like almost handshake me with this. You will try your absolute best that within literally 24 hours, like, like right now, I want you to get real results from following this. If you watch another YouTube video after this one, including any of mine, you're a Jeffrey. I failed my job here and that makes me sad. I would prefer that straight after we finish this video in the next few minutes, that you just kind of pause the video, close off YouTube, and just like think about the, the plan of action I'm gonna give you right now, because we want you to get real results. The more results you get in your life, your life's actually improving, and then you just like me more, so it's a win-win. Here is literally the full plan of action. Literally do this today. Number one, next time anyone insults you, get loud, shock them and embarrass them so that every single time, right? Make this vow and start right here, right now. 100% of the time that someone insults you, you will now get loud and embarrass them in the kind of way that I taught you and actually like make them feel some kind of pain when they do that. Number two, message or tell as many people as possible about what's genuinely happening. So this could be something you spend like an hour doing. Everyone who you care about, everyone who cares about you, message them exactly what's happening and how, how you feel. Be honest, I haven't told you this before, but I'm actually getting bullied and it's, it's really affecting my life and it's much worse than I, like, I've, I've been making it feel like. And then start to tell them every single time. Imagine genuinely messaging your father every time you end up fe fearing this person. Imagine how serious the support, social support you're gonna get when you can now start to tell people genuinely 10 to 20 to 30 times a day of the authentic fear that you're having or even like when things are actually happening every time. So literally today, message at least a few people, as many people as possible, and tell them exactly what's happening and how you feel. Number three, create your own status increasing slash power increasing plan. Bulk, bring up your size, go to the gym, learn some martial arts, looks max. And number, uh, number four, do the journaling practice where you rewrite your story. That's the things that you should do literally today, right? These four today, can you do all four today over the next hour? you're gonna get some real results in your life and we're gonna feel like this video was a success. Now, there's even long-term things for you to do. Number one, adopt a new self-image slash personality. You're the kind of man who doesn't take disrespect from others, but in a, in a nice, respectful way. Remember how Sam did it? Bro, don't joke, don't, don't joke about that. Nice, respectful way. This is your new self-image. Never let anyone get away with insulting you. Always confront them ASAP. And you might, you know, over the course of your life, there might be 10,000 times where you slipped up and you didn't say something, okay, fine. But just to have this in your self-image, I always confront people immediately if they insult me or they joke about me in a negative way. Number two, have the new self-image, the new personality, that you will be open and authentic to the people in your life. If someone's messing with you, tell people, 
Because if they love you and you love them, then with that love bond, you should tell them, right? You have a duty to tell the people in your life that you're going through something bad if you love them. Because a lot of people wrongly believe that, oh, I'll just be annoying them or whatever. No, no. If you love someone, you have a duty to tell them authentically if you're going through a rough time. That is the point. They are hoping, they need you to tell them these things because for the... the the small percentage of kids who don't open up about this because they think they're just gonna be annoying people. Their parents are devastated when they have to be at their funeral wondering why they, their children never felt comfortable enough to just open up. Be the kind of person who now utilizes your support group as you're supposed to, as like a tribal caveman. You're supposed to have this tribe around you, this, this group. And you're supposed to be able to say to them, like, I'm struggling with this thing. That's the point of having this tribe. By doing this and by being authentic, you might lose some fake friends. There might be some people who find it cringe that you talk about this. Then sweet, they're not in the tribe. Who cares? They were never compatible with you anyway. And so you've lost one person to hop on Discord with. It's like, who cares? He was a piece of shit anyway. If he, if he wasn't like friends, actually friends with you, then why would you hang out with him? There's some people who genuinely like you enough that they're hoping that you'd tell them that you're going through something because they actually would find satisfaction in helping you. So st be the kind of person who's open with that now. Now, number three, long-term, Bulk, significant weight, and build up muscle. Bulking means to just eat more. I've got videos on my channel, you can just search Hamza Bulk. Eat more, go to the gym, train hard, lift some heavy weights, feel like a, like a bigger, stronger man. If, at, like let's say this video is being uploaded just close to the start of June, like 22nd of May, six months from now, by the end of the year, you could gain 10 pounds, maybe 20 pounds of body weight, of, and, and, you know, a good amount, five, 10, 15 pounds of that could be muscle if you're a beginner. That's huge. You will feel stronger and not only like physically just look bigger, but obviously the, the pursuit of the, the gains makes you a strong person mentally as well. You know, consistently going to the gym, consistently getting the meals and the protein in, that makes you a stronger person. It gives you something productive to focus on rather than just being sat wallowing in pity. And when you've hit that like huge PR that you've been working for, you feel invincible. That's the kind of personality that we want to see from you with number three, bulk and go to the gym. And then finally, number four, long-term, improve your status through long-term looks maxing. Mew get into mewing, have the new style, the bulk will help with this, train your neck, learn how to groom yourself properly. Obviously, it's, it's, it's not very valuable coming from me when I look a little bit clap. I've not had a haircut in like two months, but things are different. If I was a bit younger, I think I'd really, really care about that. I still care about my appearance and it's still certainly with my, um, my bulk. I'm due for a haircut. It's just something I've got some weird thing with. I just hate getting haircuts, to be honest. But yeah, that is the end of this video. If you've thought this video was exceptional, please share the video link into some group chats that you're in. If you've learned from this, then please consider subscribing on YouTube. That's the best zero cost way to support this channel and the work that I do here. If you're listening to, or if you just want to subscribe to the podcast on Spotify. So I have a Spotify podcast where the like audio clips of these videos are uploaded there. So you can listen to them without the video. If you're in the gym and you don't want to pay for the YouTube uh, premium app and on Spotify, there's a few episodes which I release which aren't actually on YouTube so sometimes I like I'm with my girl and stuff and we just end up um, recording a voice memo and we put it there so you're missing out if you don't follow it on Spotify you can leave a rating up to five stars so if you want to go do that that would be helpful please check out Adonis School if you're interested in making friends who are just like you on self-improvement that's the top link in the description and if you're not already following me on social media I know that social media can be a distraction but if you do feel like you are someone who can use it in a healthy, productive manner and you want to see the educational and inspirational content that I post, then my profiles are Instagram is at Cult Leader Hamza and Twitter at Hamza Adonis. A lot of what I post on Twitter and Instagram are not the things that I talk about on YouTube. Thank you. And remember, if you want to do hard work that is essential, make it effortless. Mwah!